Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy, and we are here to guide you to go from good to amazing in the bedroom and beyond. All right, welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 219, and it's titled, When You Wish She Did That, Small Cock Syndrome and Prostate Orgasms. Okay, so if you have been listening to us regularly, a few weeks back we did an episode on how to do cock worshiping and also how to do pussy worshiping. And those two episodes did really well. Thank you all for listening, <laughs> uh, both on uh, YouTube and on the podcast platforms. Uh, they, they did really, really well. People really liked those episodes, but they also generated a fair number of questions and comments and people comments. reaching out uh yeah so which is great you know because that's we want people to think about the topics and the subjects that we talk about and so it's great when they have questions it's great when they have comments it's great when they engage it means that they're thinking about these things you know some of these things people are probably like yeah of course and some of these things they're probably going I never thought of it that way before, right? And that can sometimes bring up questions. Well, okay, since I've never thought about it that way, hmm, then then what does that mean for this or for that, right? So we have a few questions here related to that that uh, we think are great questions and really give us an opportunity to expand on what we talked about in those episodes. So if you haven't listened to those episodes, I highly recommend that you go back and listen to them. They're fucking awesome. <laughs> and uh, we've got some great stuff to share today. Think of this more, more as a continuation of those episodes and less of a listener questions, even though it really is listener questions. <laughs> <laughs> I actually love listeners questions. I think they're awesome. So we really appreciate you sending them to us and keep sending them. But before we get into our first question, let's give a big shout out to our sponsors, Power and Mastery. So if you want to join the secret club of men who are great in bed, then check out Power and Mastery at powerandmastery.com. It is the most complete sexual mastery training for men, whether you want to have harder erections, last longer, or increase your sexual skills, there is something for you at powerandmastery.com. So make sure you check it out. (laughs) Okay, so our first question comes to us from Josh, and there is a lot to unpack here. So I will read through the question first. And then we'll break it down a little bit. And then we'll break it down. We'll take it in little bits. Okay, so Josh says, what if I'm a pussy worshiper and she is not a cock worshiper? She basically is on autopilot. You said, why do you think women love vibrators? I bought her one. But she keeps saying it's too sensitive. Obviously, as a caring lover, I respect that. But also, as a knowledgeable person, it's obvious she's afraid to go over the edge. She's basically holding herself back from nirvana. What do I do? I want to do whatever she needs, but she doesn't really care what I need. We love each other, but I worship her pussy. She doesn't. I worship my cock. She doesn't. Woo! Woo! Okay, yeah. So, so there's a lot here. Let's just take the very first sentence. What if I'm a pussy worshiper and she is not a cock worshiper? Well, remember that these things are not a I'm giving so I can get. It's not a this or, you know, a, a, a tit for tat kind of a thing, right? So if you're a pussy worshiper and you love worshiping, worshiping pussy, then worship pussy. And if she's not into worshiping your cock, you can't make her do that unfortunately you can't no now you can suggest that you would like it i would say that in a loving relationship we sometimes do things for the other person even though it's not really our thing you know Mm. but we know that the other person likes it so if she's not a cock worshiper you know maybe she's not gonna on a regular basis do all those things that we discussed in our cock worshiping episode but she might be willing to do it from time to time. And so, you know, that's the sort of thing you need to have a conversation about. The conversation should also be trying to figure out why, in a sense, because is she not into it because she doesn't like it? She doesn't feel confident or comfortable. 
So she's lacking the skills. She does need to be trained. Or is it because you have an agenda? She feels pressured. There's something else that needs to happen. So you need to figure out the why behind it. Or maybe it's because she doesn't know how to relax and she too, she's too stressed. Or is it because she's really frustrated in her relationship? And I want to take a step back here because we're talking about the bedroom. But when it comes to sexual acts and pleasing your partner, how you act also outside of the bedroom will affect how your partner is willing to show up for you. And what I mean by that is you might be thinking it's all sexual, but for her, her experience might be very different. Maybe she has not getting her love language spoken. Maybe she's not getting the support she needs with household chores. Maybe, I mean, I don't know, I'm really making it up. Maybe there's a, a pattern in your way of communication and there's resentment and bitterness and and women can hold a grudge women can be mean women will remember things even when you don't i'm not saying it's a good thing and it works against them but the problem is she will remember what you did 10 years ago and she'll hold it back against you and not give you the cock worship you want Hey, I saw a great Far Side uh, cartoon the other day, and it was a police officer, and he was arresting somebody, a, a guy, and he, he had the guy up, he, uh, like with his back to him, and he's like patting him down, and he says, uh, he says, I see you're married, so you already know that anything you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and so sometimes that's the aspect that we may forget. We're like, well, she's not doing this in the bedroom. That's not working. But sometimes taking that step back and really looking, is there something deeper? Yeah. And so that that's the point here is that if she's not a cock worshiper, why? Mm -hmm. Right. And there might be there might be a deeper issue there that could be solved and she could therefore become a cock worshiper. And OK, lovely. <laughs> Let's take the next bit. You said, why do you think women love vibrators? I bought her one, but she keeps saying it's too sensitive. Okay, there are lots and lots and lots of different types of vibrators. Mm. And what a woman likes really, really varies from woman to woman. So it could be anything from, you know, just a, a typical you know, small vibrator. It could be the kind that suck on the clitoris. It could be the friggin Hitachi wand, which is like the jackhammer of vibrators, right? It so, could be like the the bunny. Oh my gosh, remember like in Sex and the City, they were talking about the uh, the rabbits, you know? Yeah, oh, there's all, there's all different kinds. So the point is that some of them can be really strong. Some of them are not that strong. You need to find one that actually works for her. You know, good thing if she thinks it's too sensitive, meaning that she actually doesn't need too much. Maybe a good thing. That may be a good thing. So if you bought her a Hitachi and she's like, whoa, this mm -hmm. is way too much for me. That's great because that means she feels sensation. And that's what you're getting at is that if she says it's too sensitive, it may just be because she has no problems feeling sensation. Whereas, say, for instance, a lot of women that you work with, that's one of the things you have to do is is like basically the de-armoring process yes. where they've got so much trauma, they don't feel anything. They don't feel anything. It's all numb at this point. Right. So being too sensitive would mean maybe put a hand in between the vibrator and, and, and her pussy. Use a sock over the vibrator. Use it on the lowest setting. And don't use it directly on the clit, but maybe above or below. Just to use it to relax and not turn, you know, and not like excite. Because these are good. They're kind of like massager. They can yeah. help you release the tension. And, and, you know, you might have to try a few until mm -hmm. you find one that works. Yes. It's usually best if she can pick one out for herself, but she may not even know what she likes or what she wants. Th so that's the beauty of to going to some. a sex store because you can try things on that is on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think you can actually try them. On Over your, your pants, you know, first, I've but... done that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so, 
and then of course there's there's one last part to that that needs to be talked about which is is she really too sensitive in other words there may be trauma there that does the opposite thing right mm -hmm. so trauma can cause women to numb out and not feel anything or to be overreactive or to be overreactive right good points so that's another thing that needs to be looked into is it is she really too sensitive or is there some sort of trauma thing and it's a defense mechanism where it's like don't go there don't touch uh and then it's interesting that josh you're saying that in your opinion she's afraid of going over the edge so is is it really that she's afraid of going over the edge or is it that she doesn't know how to let go and she's not feeling safe safety that's a good point so there could be an element of safety where she doesn't feel safe enough to let go um, but there is a possibility too and we know nothing about her background mm -hmm. but if you are just from what you've written josh if you really are you know, a caring lover and somebody that respects her and somebody that really wants to do whatever she wants, then you sound like you're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it may not be you who is not creating a safe environment. So you could be as safe a person as possible, but there may be some trauma there um, from past relationships or childhood or whatever it is that is not allowing her to really let go, as you said, Celine, and, yes. and access her pleasure. And maybe it's not something that the two of you can solve together. Maybe you need a third party to help you see things differently because you get us stuck in a certain way of relating. And I see that with some of the clients that I worked with, where sometimes, you know, there's a dynamic that's created and then that's kind of what you experience. And having somebody else who can step out and be like, okay, here's what's at play. Let's try new things. It can really help you. Yeah. And that, you know, working with somebody else can really help you get to that core root of mm -hmm. why you're not allowing yourself uh, to access that pleasure. I think I want to move to maybe the last part of the question mm -hmm. uh, before we get to our next question. But you did bring up a point that she's not a pussy worshiper either. So you are asking her to do something that she doesn't even do for herself. It's a little bit tricky. Well, so yeah, so what what you wrote was um, you worship her pussy, but she doesn't and you worship your cock, but she doesn't. So when it comes to, you know, what you were just saying, Celine, is if she can't even worship herself, how is she going to be able to worship you? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. And so, you know, what, what this is signaling to me is that there's definitely some trauma there. There's something in the way. She needs to get to a place where, yeah, she can remove whatever's in the way and access her own pleasure. I am constantly amazed, and I talk about this on the show somewhat regularly. I'm constantly amazed at how many women don't know their own bodies. Mm -hmm. We talk about this all the time. And this is a large part of the work that you do. And, and we've seen this not only in, in the work that we do, but we've seen this in the work that other professionals who do what we do, um, you know, their experiences as well, where you could do something as simple as an exercise, having a woman sit down and look in a mirror at their vagina. And they have all kinds of emotions, they have tears, they go, oh my God, I, I never saw it like that before. Like I never knew that it even looked like that. Mm -hmm. There is so much disconnection with women and their own bodies, their own vaginas. And so really what I would suggest for her is that she do some of that work to get in touch with herself, get to know her vagina, get to love it, get to love pleasuring it, and I think that would go a long way in helping her open up to all these other things that, mm -hmm. that you want to do with her. And again, it has to come from her. You may wish it, hope for it, but ultimately it has to be her decision. Hopefully you can be good at inspiring her. <laughs> maybe, just maybe you could get her to listen to the Love Lab podcast episodes mm -hmm. because there's tons and tons of stuff there that could be really, really helpful for her. But, you know, don't, uh, don't give up, Josh, but yeah. also don't push. 
just know that there's something there that she needs to work on be a loving supportive caring partner start you know loving uh, conversations where you can talk about these things and just let her know that you're willing to support her in any way that she needs exactly and make time make time to explore each other without any pressure and and see where it leads all right so let's move on to our second question we have k next his biggest problem is he has small cock syndrome it never used to bother me and i used to get all kinds of pussy in my younger years now i'm almost 40 and i think i got even smaller i'm embarrassed and i don't want to share it with anyone with that being said i've taken a new liking to masturbation but i'm getting really bored of it maybe you can help me with some new techniques or something to help me love myself and be confident and learn to love my small cock thanks can't wait to hear from you okay okay all right we we got to start with the big elephant in the room and that is your feeling that your cock is too small now yes. you didn't tell us what size your cock is so we don't really know but i can say pretty confidently unless you're really small you've got plenty right so in other words the average penis size is five inches that means 50 percent of the population has a penis smaller than five inches obviously 50 percent has a penis larger than five inches but we've talked about this on the show a lot as well you know a lot of guys like you know they watch porn they see these men with enormous penises that are way above the average and they think all guys have big penises if you've really spent a lot of time around nude beaches or in locker rooms and things like that you would realize that that's just not true like a lot of guys have smaller penises so i was um you know i'm part of like different groups on facebook and there was a poll that was being made and it was literally about that size matter and there were over a hundred women who answered so it's just for women that group right and i was really curious because we've done shows on that we did a we've show done on videos penis size i mean matter. Yep. it's something that we talk about because i know it's a real issue and what was fascinating is this is not just coming from me this is coming from over a hundred different women the answers were all over the place so yes for some women a big cock is an absolute necessity it just is but for a lot of women the most common answer was it's not what you've got it's how you use what you have and so for most women it was more important how in tune you were with your body and what you could do with what you had rather than the size. For most women, they prefer a very attentive lover who can pay attention to them and is not just distracted by, hey, here's my big, big dick, you know? yeah so yeah i mean there's always going to be some women that just want or need a big cock but they are the minority they, really they are. are absolutely the minority by quite a lot what most women will tell you is as long as it's of a decent size and he knows how to use it that will do that that is absolutely the answer most women will give you that means, okay, that you have a large pool of potential women who don't mind what size you are. And, and here's the thing, you actually wrote in here. That you used to get plenty. A, a, a clue, right? Mm -hmm. Which is that when you were younger, you used to get plenty. You said, uh, it never used to bother me and I used to get all kinds of pussy in my younger years. Well, did any of those women care? Now, I know you're saying that you're almost 40 and you think it's gotten even smaller. That's probably not true. Now, if, if you haven't been using your penis at all, masturbation or sex, 
then yes, it can shrink a little bit, a little bit. Not you're you're not losing half an inch, right? Like you maybe it's a little bit smaller. But the thing is, remember this is elastic tissue that fills up with blood. So if it seems smaller, maybe you just need it hasn't been used. You need to stretch it out a little bit, or maybe you have some circulation issues, right? Where you need to increase blood flow. I would suggest that you go back and listen to the episode that we did uh, with Dr. Brandeis. Mm. And in that episode, we covered all of these things. He's got some interesting technologies uh, that you can use to really help. Um, they are working on something now where they're... they're um... It is episode 186, The Modern Disaster of Men's Sexual Health and How to Fix It with Dr. Justin Brandeis. Yes, that is the episode. And don't let the title fool you. There, there's a definite discussion in there about size and mm -hmm. some new technologies that can help you. Yes. So for sure, go check that out. You're almost 40. I'm almost 50. My penis hasn't shrunk. <laughs> but here's the thing. I use it. Not only do I use it in sexuality with my wife, but I also give it testicle massages and genital massages. And, you know, if, if something happens due to somebody's health or whatever, and we can't have sex for a while, like I make sure that it, it gets some movement and some use, right? And... So you know, you keep yourself in good shape because we have to address the, the hormone part, you know, the testosterone, because it will affect your virility. It's going to affect your drive and your desire, not so much your penis size. No, but, but it's all like mental too, right? Well, because if you don't have the drive and desire, then you're not using your penis, in which case, you know, use it or lose it kind of thing. But it's probably not any smaller. Most likely what's happening is you've lost the confidence. That's most likely what's happening. So if you got plenty of pussy when you were younger and the women didn't mind, then you are perfectly capable of getting plenty of pussy today and they're not going to mind either. What I find interesting is that you mentioning, Kay, that you're getting bored with your masturbation. So your masturbation is basically not working for you. And what that tells me is you're probably still masturbating the way you did when you were 15. And guess what? Midlife, we want different things. So do the women you're going to have sex with. We want a different kind of sex. What used to work before is not going to fly anymore. Yeah, independently that's, of your size. That's a really great point, which is that, you know, obviously when we're, when we're young men and we're masturbating, we're just like, going as fast as we can just because we just want to basically have an ejaculation and don't want to get caught right and so we just learn to do the sort of quick and dirty right whereas now that you're older you might need more than that like take some time you know put yourself in a nice environment play some music whatever you know relaxes you and use both hands use both hands slow things down use some lube mm-hmm um you've done a few masturbation technique videos they're on the youtube channel yes so just go to the youtube channel use the search function because there's a lot of hundreds of videos on there i know so, i think we have like 250 videos or yeah. 300 i don't know so use the search function and, and search for that and, and that will give you all kinds of potentially new ideas for how to improve your masturbation practice really i think what needs to happen here is you just need to get your confidence back. Mm -hmm. You just need to be like, hey, you know, uh, my penis is fine. I can do the job, you know, you know, and we've talked about this, too. It's like women only have nerve endings so deep into the vagina. Right. So you don't need a, a super long penis. And, and when we're talking about, you know, hitting the G spot, we're talking about like a knuckle and a half of your finger. Like your penis is definitely bigger like than that. Two inches, three inches. Not even, right? You know, so so the point is, is that as long as you're at least, you know, two to three inches long, you can penetrate, you can hit a G spot, you know, you, you couple that with some good foreplay, some good tongue and finger techniques and the, and the ability to last long enough, you're going to be good to go. So I think it's a perfect segue into 
the uh, the invitation to work with you, Kevin, because I'd say, okay, really work with Kevin if you want to increase your confidence. Get into our course, Sexual Mastery. That's another option. But do something. Do the, Know that you've lost your mojo. Don't blame it on your cock. Just do the work to find it back and, and be in love with yourself just the way that you are. Yes. Great advice. <laughs> the slight delay. Yes. <laughs> but we know what that means. That means it's time for my ad. Hey, guys, you know what makes a man great? You know the kind of masculine man that women are irresistibly attracted to and want. Is it money, job title, his physical body, being great in bed, a big penis? We just discovered it's not a big penis. <laughs> <laughs> great pickup lines or something else. But what if you don't have those or only some of them? What if you've had a string of failed relationships, are embarrassed by your bedroom skills, doubt whether you can rise to the occasion, Worry about lasting long enough or are always stuck in the friend zone. I can help you. If you are ready to make big changes and finally become the man you have always wanted to be, then this is the program for you. To find out more, please go to selinaremy.com forward slash go forward slash warrior. Link is always in the description. This is for my coaching program where I get to work one-on-one -on -one with you, answer all your questions, give you all the latest tools, techniques, tips, to really improve yourself first and foremost. Yes. To be the best version of yourself, but also how you show up in relationships, how your sex life unfolds, all of that stuff. And you will see that once we work on helping you become the best version of yourself and improving your relationships, you will see every other part of your life improve as well because it's all connected. It's not separate. So this is your opportunity, Kay, if you want to, really step up into your confidence and, and, and upping your game, just work with, with Kevin. CelineRemy.com forward slash go forward slash warrior. All right. Uh, how about our last question? We have Ryan. Okay. Ryan says, I have a question about prostate orgasms. They seem like a mythical orgasm, and I am wanting to experience this with my wife. We have the toys and all, but we are not sure if it is a mental thing, but I am really wanting to have this with my wife. Celine, have you given one, and Kevin, have you experienced one? What has happened in a relationship where prostate play has been introduced from your experiences and consulting? Whew, okay, there's a couple different things there that we need to cover. And there's last part. Oh, that's part of the same thing? Mm -hmm. Sorry. With that said, the topic of polarity in situations like this comes into view for me here. Okay, yeah, so that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about for sure uh, when he was asking about what happens in a relationship with prostate play. So, okay, but let's take it from the top and just talk about prostate orgasms first. All right. Okay. Well, it's yours. <laughs> it's yours to play with. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in my this is just my personal experience. In my personal experience, I don't orgasm just from prostate stimulation. So the idea that you can just stimulate my prostate and not touch anything else and whatsoever. You're in nirvana. And I'm just going to launch into a big orgasm and <laughs> ejaculation. It's never happened for me. I'm not saying it's not possible. It is possible. I mean, look, we know paralyzed people who've trained themselves to touch the tip of their finger and have an orgasm, right? So technically, it is possible. If somebody were turned on enough by prostate stimulation, they could potentially have an orgasm just from that. But here's what here's how I experience it. I experience it more as something that increases my regular orgasm. So if I were to use the term prostate orgasm, I would mean having an orgasm where there was prostate stimulation or play involved that led to an increased orgasmic sensation. You know, it's interesting that you're saying that because uh, over the years I have had the joy of sharing many, many hundreds, thousands 
of uh, prostate orgasms. And you're right. I think there's a misconception that you press the button and suddenly you go to like this place. For most men, it increases the sensations on their penises. And it's the coupling of the prostate with the penis that goes to a different world. Yeah. So assuming you have a healthy prostate, having some touch or pressure on the prostate can be an enjoyable sensation. So anything that adds pleasurable sensations while your cock is being stimulated is going to increase that, right? I also want to mention that it's very common for prostate to be numb for a while where a man doesn't feel much or you know if you're older and you have an enlarged prostate which many you know men over 40 do um you might even have some discomfort initially yeah well i don't want to go there just yet okay. i want to talk about numbness because i think that it's similar to what women experience with the g-spot where it takes a while for this to awaken so sometimes a couple will try prostate play and be like, it didn't do it or nothing happened. So I guess it's not meant to be. And you have to give it some time. Even with you, it took quite a few um, practices before you really got into it. Remember, yeah. like it was... I, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't say that it was because it was numb. No. I think for me, I just needed to get used to relaxing into mm -hmm. it. It was something that was relatively new. And I was like, okay, not sure, <laughs> not sure <laughs> how I'm that. feeling about this. But and then eventually I learned to relax into mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And you're right. Uh, the third option is that it could be painful. But usually, it's usually painful if you tensed. So usually I always tell people, don't go, don't push if it's like tight and the person's having pain. And yes, it can be painful if there's a prostatitis or an inflammation or something. And that again is a tricky one, I would say to kind of always stick with, you know, a professional have your doctor know what's going on. Uh, but I will also mention that I had a client that had um, prostatitis and we did regular prostate massage and he was able to get off his meds. Again, with supervision of his doctor through the regular massage and um, that worked. Yeah, I want to add one more thing to, because, you know, basically what I was saying is, well, you're not going to orgasm just from stimulation of the prostate. Mm -hmm. It is possible, like we said, but, but probably not. But aside from the fact that if you have a healthy prostate that's not enlarged or inflamed in some way, that it can feel pleasurable, the other thing that it can do is it can stimulate more intense contraction. So when you have an orgasm, right? There's a couple of things that happen. One of which is those rhythmic contractions, right? Mm -hmm. And those can be really intense and really pleasurable. Well, stimulating the prostate while you are having an orgasm can create more intense sensations, more intense contractions. So therefore it can make the orgasm feel stronger. And if she's using her fingers and she's really on the prostate, she literally feel the pulsing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, the other thing that I wanted to say is it's all about attitude. So you're talking about the dynamic with a couple. It's true that usually in a heterosexual couple, he does the penetrating, she's being penetrated. In the prostate play, it's reversed. And you have to approach this as a gift. You're not trying to do him and like, don't as the woman approach it like you're a dude who's about to fuck his, her man. Like, be there as a woman, be gentle. Yeah. So, so just because he is allowing for a moment uh, himself to be more open and vulnerable 
doesn't mean that you as the woman automatically step into masculine mode put your strap on on and like i'm gonna fuck the shit out of him like no that's no. not no. that's that you show up as a woman you show up think of it the same way as if you were going to give him a genital massage yes. right he's going to lay back and just allow you to just worship his cock it's the same thing. You approach it with the same attitude, the same reverence, the same reverence. And you are you are giving to him. You are not yes. taking from him in a masculine sense of I'm going to do you or do this or, or anything like that. So the other thing is, too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you really, really like prostate play, maybe you'll do it frequently, but just because you are OK relaxing and letting a woman, you know, give you a prostate massage or do some sort of prostate stimulation while you're having sex doesn't in any way mean that the dynamic, the polarity in that relationship has shifted. Mm -hmm. Now, if every time you have sex, you're like, I want to be the bottom and bend peg over <laughs> and yeah, can you put your strap on on and peg me? Like if you're doing that all the time, then yeah, your polarity is reversed, yeah. right? And you're in the feminine and she's in the masculine. Short of that though, if you're just like, hey, every once in a while, it would be great if you gave me some prostate mm -hmm. stimulation. I mean, and then, you know, we, we uh, sell this product on our site, the Aneros, right? Which is a, a self prostate massager for men, but it, it can also be used while having sex. So as a guy, you could use an Aneros while you're on top mm -hmm. and you're actually penetrating her so you can do that so prostate stimulation and play doesn't always mean that you are simply in the receiving feminine mode of of the dynamic i mean you could be you can be a receiving vulnerable receptive masculine yeah that's all i, I know some people are like wait I, that doesn't compute i don't get it but yeah well and also honestly it's it's the greatest gift a man can give his woman to be willing to be so vulnerable with her and open up in that sense. And that at the same time, he still remains masculine. He hasn't shifted, but he's he's willing to be seen in that most tender spot. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, if you are a masculine man, the ability to let go and be that vulnerable it really takes you being a very masculine man, like yes. like a somewhat masculine man or a man who's sort of insecure about his sexuality and his manhood is not OK with this. Mm -hmm. Right. And is very uncomfortable being in this position. But a man who's super comfortable with his masculinity and his sexuality and he knows yeah, that he's firmly, I'll take it up the ass. firmly in his masculinity, he's perfectly fine relaxing into that vulnerable mm -hmm. space from time to time. Yes. You know, I mean, if I, if he only ever wants to be in that space, then he's probably not very masculine. Yes. But if he's masculine and he's like, you know what? You know, it's time for our once a month, you know, prostate massage. And I can just lay here and relax and just allow myself to be open and vulnerable mm -hmm. and enjoy my pleasure. Great. Because, you know, every other time that you get together, right mm -hmm. so you're going to be the masculine man and it, it doesn't take away from that in any way i was going to say i know we have a whole like prostate show we have two prostate, we have two prostate shows. shows one was like way in the beginning i like know episode okay so the one you want to check out i think it was episode seven or something something like that's the first one the second one was episode 137 what you need what you need to know about the prostate and prostate massage. So if you want more, Ryan, on um, the Hatus, check out this particular show. Yeah, you know, at 219 episodes now, like I know when you're in your podcast app, like you have to scroll forever to get to some of those older ones. So I'm sure a lot of people never even see how much content there really is there. Yes. But but so far in this show, we've referenced four or five previous shows that are uh, worth listening to to go more in depth. Yeah. So if you want to know more about any of these topics that we've discussed today, we've literally done entire shows on them. And, you know, we did our best to answer your questions in this episode. And if you want to go even deeper, ha ha ha, 
pun intended, <laughs> then go check out those other episodes as well. I love how we went full circle with the um, broaching the prostate play, just like you do the cock worship. So that's how we started it, you know. Jim, we didn't even plan that. I know, but it's so good. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope that answers all of uh, the questioners for Ryan, Kay, and Josh. Um, as always, you know, feel free to send us questions. We love doing these episodes. We hope that it's uh, helpful. We know that even though there's only a certain percentage of people that will actually get up the nerve to ask us a question, we know that many, many, many of you have these same questions. And so that we know that doing these episodes can be helpful for far more people than just the person who asked the question. All right, that's all for this episode, and we will see you next week. We hope you like this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoy this show, subscribe, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. And for more free, exclusive content, join us in the Passion Vault at CelineRemy.com forward slash vault. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y dot com forward slash vault. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.